In this rather long tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to strip down and rebuild your HEQ5 or similar mount. I'm just going to take you through a few important topics before we start. Firstly, why would you consider stripping down and rebuilding your mount? Well, there's a number of possible reasons. One is if it's lost performance, you've had it some time, uh, you've tried retuning the backlash, for example, uh, which I've covered in a separate tutorial and hasn't really helped. The second reason is to extend its life. I would suggest, depending on how much you use it, that this process should be repeated roughly every two years. I had had mine for two years when I first did it, and uh, there was a lot of black gunk all over the, uh, the worm drives and bearings uh, and gears. Uh, so I was glad that I did it and it improved its performance. And the third reason is simply to learn more about your mount. It's a very interesting process to follow. You get to see the guts of your mount that, uh, that you don't normally see. So which other mounts require the same process as the HEQ5? Well, the Skywatch HEQ5, HEQ5 Pro, and the Orion Sirius EQG all have the same mechanics. They vary with electronics and hand controllers and the like, but the mechanics is the same. So you can follow this process for any of those mounts. So you're probably wondering, can I really do this myself? Well, I can't really answer that for you. It depends on your experience and your confidence uh, and whether you have the right tools. Confidence, hopefully, uh, will partly come by watching this video and then you can make your decision about whether you are happy to do it yourself and whether you have the tools that you need. Uh, just a quick note on safety. Uh, the degreaser that you use to clean off uh, the gears and the bearings uh, generally is fairly nasty uh, liquid that uh, gives off fumes and you should use it outside in a well ventilated area. Suggest you wear gloves and don't use it near naked planes as it's uh, very flammable. But read the safety information on your degreaser so you know what precautions you need to take. A preparation, uh, clearly having the right tools together is important and I'm going to show you in a minute all the different tools that you'll need to do the job. Uh, it's a good idea to watch this video at least once all the way through so you actually know what's going to be involved and what you're going to have to do. Uh, partly to give you that confidence but partly to prepare you so there's no surprises along the way. And when you come to actually do the follow the process, I suggest you allow about two hours per axis. Uh, so allow plenty of time. Don't start at uh, nine o'clock at night if you want to finish the same day. And give yourself plenty of workspace. You need an area where you can put down the piece parts that come off as you, as you disassemble it. An area uh, outdoors where you can clean the parts, etc. So uh, think about where you're going to do things. And. Uh, if ultimately you watch this video and you decide it's, this is not for me, it's too involved, I, I'm not comfortable doing it myself, then I would suggest you contact Darkframe uh, Limited. Uh, so Dave Woods from Darkframe is a good guy and uh, has got masses of experience. And if you want to have them do a professional uh, strip down, retune, rebuild of your mount, they'll do that for you. And they also do something called the Stellar Drive upgrade, which will significantly improve the uh, the unguided performance of your mount. So those are other options there. Uh, just so you know where I learned to do this, I use the Astro Baby website, which is very uh, commonly uh, referenced by people. Um, the links, both Darkframe and Astro Baby, are here in yellow. Uh, so I use the Astro Baby website to learn how to do this. I did get stuck at one point and had to go on the forums to find out how to continue. And uh, so I have added a few tweaks of my own to the process, and uh, hopefully improves it a little. Uh, and a disclaimer, last thing, if you decide to do this, you do it at your own risk. Um, so, But I wish you all the best of luck and hopefully the video will give you the confidence uh, and the information you need to, to do it successfully. Uh, and, uh, and all the best with it. So the tools you need, you need plenty of kitchen paper, uh, an Allen, some Allen keys, one and a half, two, two and a half and four millimeter metric Allen keys an old toothbrush, a medium size Phillips screwdriver, a 3 8 socket drive uh, and a modified 12mm socket, a flat blade screwdriver, some gloves, degreaser, some lithium grease preferably with a wide temperature range and a soft rubber mallet. So we begin with the declination axis stripped down and rebuild. So firstly unplug the power from your mount 
and disconnect anything else including the hand controller. Undo the clutches and rotate so that you can easily access the declination clutch. Undo the screw that holds the declination clutch lever in place and then remove the lever itself. Now you can unscrew the declination clutch screw and underneath the screw there is a small brass button it can be very tricky to get out at this stage you leave it in there till later but you need to be aware that it's there and can fall out you'll see here I'm turning the mount to keep that upwards so that it doesn't fall out so I'm turning the mount over in RA so I can access the motor cover panel and now I'm doing the screws to get access to the drive motors now mine is a Rowan belt modded HEQ5 so I need to remove the belts so that the uh, worms are not connected to the motor gears if you have an unmodified one then you shouldn't need to do much under here under this panel here but it's probably still worth taking the panel off just so you can see what's what underneath so I'm now going to uh, loosen the three grub screws that hold the top mounting plate on the top of the deck shaft don't undo these completely just give them a few turns anti-clockwise again take care that that button the clutch doesn't fall out. There is a fair amount of grease in there so it's uh, fairly sticky and unlikely to fall out. Just watch out for that. With a bit of wiggling you can remove that top mounting plate. Now underneath the mounting plate you'll find a circular nut with two holes in it. On mine this is completely seized on the end of the deck shaft and I cannot for the life of me remove it but it turns out you don't actually need to remove that nut at all so if yours doesn't come away easily just leave it there and you can carry on now moving to the other end of the deck shaft we now need to un, uh, to loosen the grub screws the three grub screws on this bottom section again just enough to loosen the grip of the white body onto the sh onto the uh, shaft deck shaft. Okay, so now we need to get hold of the top of the deck shaft with one hand and unscrew the body at the bottom of the shaft with the other hand. I choose to leave the uh, counterweight bar in place. You can actually slide it out at this point and remove it, but I like to leave it on there just to help uh, prevent this piece I'm unscrewing now from falling. Of course, if you do all this on a workbench instead of on, on the tripod, uh, then things can't fall. Perhaps that's better. That's up to you. So that's now unscrewed. So obviously the button needs to come out of the end of the counter bar, uh, counterweight bar and we can now slide this piece off now we can undo the two thumb screws and remove the green reticule ring I like to be quite orderly with where I'm putting all the bits I take off lay them out on the table in the order in which they came off it's easier to get things back together okay so now I'm loosening the three screws that hold the face plate of the declination motor to the body just loosening them enough that I can push that to the left and hence loosen the row and drive belt with the belt now loose can gently coax it off of the worm gear and pull it and remove it. 
Now I'm going to loosen the two grub screws which are used for the backlash tuning so they're no longer holding on to the uh, worm carrier. And now we can remove the three large bolts which hold the worm carrier onto the body, which is the deck worm carrier. These bolts need to be completely removed. And you can see the worm carrier is now loose. So now it's uh, time to slide the detonation shaft out of the body of the mount. It's a bit awkward this. You need to be very careful. There is a tapered gear on one end that can fall out. So the one I'm holding there. Make sure you retrieve that. And there's another, uh, sorry, tapered bearing. And there is another bearing, as you can see, trying to fall out of the body at the other end. So you just need to be careful not to lose those. And here with the counterweight bar in there, that can slide out as well, so just take care. It's a bit of an uh, unstable <laughs> set of kit. Now this bearing needs to come out of the body. These bearings are very close tolerance. All the bearings like this one are the same. They're very close tolerance. They can stick on the way in and stick on the way out. They can be a bit of a fight. But just persevere and you'll get them out. So now we have the top part of the declination shaft. I'm now taking out the counterweight bar. And now lifting off the worm carrier. Now you'll see here there's a very thin red washer. It's quite fragile. I'm just using my fingernails and very gently coaxing it. And don't try not to flex it too much, you just coax it up the bar until it comes off. Very important that that goes back on and is not damaged in the removal process. So now we can actually remove the worm gear out of the detonation head and slide it off the detonation shaft. Now the bearings need to be removed from the detonation uh, worm gear. Again, as I said, they, sometimes they'll come out really easily, other times they will get stuck. If you do uh, find it's, it's getting stuck, it's actually best to put your flat of your palm on it and push it back in again and start again. Uh, it's, it's the fact that you're pulling on one side and it's not coming out parallel to the hole that it's in that makes it stick. So if you are able to maybe put something in and pull both sides of it together but you will get it out eventually you just have to persevere now we turn the worm gear over and we've got another identical bearing on the other side benefit here though is that we can put our thumbs through the worm gear uh, to help to push it out and um, maybe two thumbs pushing on the other side it can work quite well you can see here I'm struggling struggling a little bit to pull it out just pushing it back in and trying again and eventually resorting to putting my thumbs through from the opposite side still struggling so I actually end up pushing it back in again I popped it back in again two thumbs from the other side just have to keep keep trying to persuade it and eventually it pops out quite easily in the end. Okay, and now we can take that little button from the detonation clutch out of the hole. This can be a bit of a fight. The first time I did it was really easy and uh, this time I had a bit of a fight. I use an Allen key from the inside and try to push the button out and just as it looks as if it's about to fall out it refused to. So I started pushing it the opposite way and so until it dropped inside this housing uh, then all we've got to do is retrieve it there it is 
So now it's time to uh, disassemble the worm carrier to take the rubber bung off of one end and that reveals the float adjuster. Now the float adjuster needs to be unscrewed at one end, there's actually one at each end, we only need to remove the one at the opposite end. Now for this I made a special tool, I just got a 12 millimeter socket piece and um, filed it down to leave two protrusions. I made them a bit narrow in truth, they'll probably be up to about a millimeter wide opposite one, one another and uh, then pop a little uh, socket spanner on there and it, the 12 mil socket fits brilliantly into the hole with those two little protrusions they engage in the two slots on the float adjuster it can be a little bit fiddly especially once it comes out of the housing the tool tends to slide and slip around a little bit but uh, certainly does the trick and once it's actually uh, above the surface you can just use your fingers to finish the job and get it out you can see it slipping around a little bit no, so it's now now sticking out of the, uh, the body of the worm carrier I can just use my fingers now to finish the job Okay, so that's the float adjuster out. So the next thing to do is to remove the drive gear from the end of the worm shaft. There are two grub screws to undo. Loosen those off. And then you should be able to pull that gear off the end of the shaft. Okay, so you can now remove the shaft from the carrier. You'll see it's got two small bearings on it. I didn't take them off at this point, but you can do. They do need to come off before they get cleaned. So if you want to pull them off either end, go ahead. Now if you look back on the body of the mount at this point, you'll see a small brass cube uh, mounted to the body uh, using a single uh, socket head cap screw. And this is the cube that one of the grub screws for adjusting the backlash presses against. And on mine I found that the that cube was not square to the line you see across the top of the text there and that meant the grub screw was not pushing square onto the face which is not good so if you want to adjust that just undo the screw just adjust that cube and get it really nice and square to that line uh, just below above, above where the text is and tighten that screw up again and just for information the other grub screw presses against the outside of this ring on the mount body you can see the imprint just where I'm pointing uh, where that grub screw has been uh, pushing during the backlash adjustment. So now it's time to clean all the gears and bearings. Uh, so you need gloves, toothbrush, you will need the lithium grease when you finish cleaning but not uh, not straight away, it's the cleaning job that needs doing first and of course the degreaser. A warning about the degreaser I thought oh, I'll take it outside I'll, and I'll do all the degreasing over my lawn. Degreaser kills plants. So I have a nice dead patch on my lawn at the moment where I did this last time. So I recommend using an old kitchen bowl and uh, do all of your spraying of the degreaser in there outside in a well ventilated area away from, from any naked flames, cigarettes etc. So I've got a cloth uh, for uh, wiping the toothbrush off. I'm wearing gloves. So starting with the worm gear, scraping out all of the debris from the teeth of the gear. Mine was done fairly recently as I said at the beginning so it doesn't look 
very black but you may find that yours is really covered in black gunk you need to get all of that off and they'll wipe it off with a toothbrush go in small amounts take your time get as much of it out as you can so the degreaser you don't have to use as much degreaser in order to finish cleaning it work your way all around once it looks reasonable you can use the degreaser to finish the job Okay, so next I'm going to do the worm drive itself. Again, cleaning out the teeth of the worm drive, wiping off the, the debris that comes away off the toothbrush. Looks like I'm not doing a too great a job here, but I did, as I say, clean my mount, uh, redo my mount not that long ago, so it doesn't really need too much taking those two little bearings off because I didn't take them off earlier on one of them that can be a little sticky where the flat is there might be a little burr and make it a little tricky to pull off but it should come off a little perseverance okay so with the, the larger debris removed finish the job again with the degreaser And now we move on to the bearings. I'm starting with the smaller bearings, just cleaning them off the degreaser. Now the tapered bearing. Really take your time to get these uh, parts nice and clean and try and get all the black muck out of them. Um, use plenty of degreaser. Well, this part has a lot of cavities inside it, so really take your time getting as much of that out as you can. You will be pushing new lithium grease into the cavities later on. Okay, so now we have the three uh, round bearings, the larger ones to do. I'll speed this part of the video up, it's a little bit boring to watch and you get the idea of what you need to do there, so I'll speed this up. So once you've cleaned all the bearings, uh, also need to clean the worm carrier. Notice I didn't use these kitchen tissues on any of the bearings uh, or the worm drive or worm gear because it's uh, not a lint free uh, tissue but I'm happy to use it on the worm carrier which is less critical. Just cleaning that out. Okay so with everything nice and clean we now need to dispose of the degreaser that's in the, the bowl. Um, I found the best way to do this was to head into the kitchen. Just showing there how, how clean my worm drive and worm gear are. All looking nice and clean. So yeah, heading into the kitchen, just put some washing up liquid into the bowl, um, turn on a tap and just mix up the degreaser and the washing up liquid with some water. 
just loose it around and then you can pour it down the sink hopefully your kitchen won't smell too bad okay so now it's time to start putting new grease uh, onto the worm shaft you'll notice that the two bars at the end of the shaft are different lengths and it's the longer one which carries uh, the drive gear it's worth remembering that and it's this end is where the drive gear goes so we'll open up the lithium grease and first of all we're going to grease the two small bearings that go on to the worm drive shafts shaft either end the bearings you need to try and push the lithium grease into the inside of the bearing it's not really doing very much on the outside you need to push it into the bearing um, sometimes you can put a lump of grease on the palm of your hand and push the bearing into the grease just make sure you're really getting getting it in there and uh, just a superficial amount on the outside so that's on the shaft and feeling nice and now we'll do the same for the other one just really pressing it into the bearing not so easy to get grease into this particular, these particular bearings because they're so small popping that onto the shaft ok so with both of the small bearings back on the worm shaft And now make sure we've got it the right way around and slide it back into the carrier. And now to hold it in there, uh, we need to put the float adjuster hopefully in the right end, which is this end, the opposite end from the, uh, the drive gear. And make sure you put the adjuster in with the two slots facing outwards so you can get a tool in to undo it again if you don't put it in the wrong way around or you'll have a really hard time getting it out. Screwing it in as far as I can with my hands and then use the little custom tool again to finish it off. Now you may notice when you take this float adjuster out uh, that it actually isn't done up very tight and I think that's how it's meant to be so have a feel when you take it out of how tight it is and try and replicate that when you put it back in. I really just I'm turning this until, until it stops. I'm not cranking any kind of torque onto it. It's just a very gentle torque on there and make sure once you've done that that uh, the worm shaft is free to rotate and doesn't feel like it's um, got much, any, any notable resistance on it at all now it's time to put the lithium grease onto the worm gear itself putting a decent amount on all the way around the surface of the worm Okay, now you don't want to get grease on this drive gear so clean your gloves off before you handle it uh, so there's a flat on the end of the shaft so we need to push the uh, drive gear on so that one of the two grub screws lines up square with that flat now the, the amount of engagement of this gear on the end of the shaft is important if you get it to be roughly four or five millimeters as you can see here I've got a gap four or five millimeters in there between the worm carrier and the base of the gear it'll be roughly right but we can fine tune that later so don't panic if it's not exactly where it was when you took it apart now doing up the two grub screws that hold the drive gear onto the end of the worm shaft these need to be nipped up tight
okay now I just choose to put a very very tiny amount of lithium grease really a tiny amount on this surface here and uh, rightly or wrongly I do that because I know that during backlash adjustment this carrier has to slide against the face of the mount maybe unnecessary but something I decided to do Okay, last thing to do is put the rubber bung back in and that's the worm carrier reassembled. The next thing to do is to grease uh, the tapered bearing. And here there are plenty of cavities so I'm putting a lump of grease on my glove and pushing the bearing into the grease rather than the other way around. So long as you really get a decent amount of grease inside this bearing in all the nooks and crannies with a good push and rotate it uh, regularly while you're doing this process to really work the grease into the into the bearing and remove any excess as you go don't want to leave, leave large blobs of grease showing on the outside. It won't really have won't really have any function. I'm just cleaning off the excess there. Just exercising it, make sure it's running nice and smoothly. So now greasing up the other bearings. These ones are a bit harder to get the grease to go into the, really go inside the bearing. They're much more tightly sealed than the tapered bearing. And again, make sure you exercise them and uh, remove any excess. Just putting a finger wipe on the inside here where it's going to go onto the, into the worm gear. Make sure it's clean and lightly lubricated. And now the fight begins to try and get the bearing back in. Now you need to be careful here. The brass worm gear is precious and uh, is a much softer material than the steel the bearing is made out of. Uh, the first time I did this I managed to do it entirely by hand. This time I really struggled and I ended up getting a soft uh, rubber mallet uh, or sometimes called a persuader and as you see there just giving it a gentle tap to just persuade it to go in do not hit it hard you will damage it and definitely don't use a metal hammer Just greasing up the final bearing. And that's ready to go into the other end of the worm gear. Time to have the fight with it again. Very tight tolerance these are. Once they're actually in, they move very smoothly, but they take a bit of persuading. Just a light tap and it pops in. Okay, so that's both bearings put back into the worm uh, gear. Now it's time to put grease on the actual uh, worm gear teeth. Work your way around, get a nice even layer of grease on there, removing excess as you go.
OK. So that's now ready to go back onto the deck shaft. Make sure the teeth are uppermost on the worm gear and slide it down onto the deck shaft and into the housing at the, at the bottom. Make sure there's no debris in there and it's nice and clear. And slide it in. You'll feel a bit of resistance as it goes in as the air tries to escape. So not much room for the air to get out. Make sure it turns freely. Okay, so with that in, uh, there are three small grub screws in the deck head here. They don't really seem to do very much uh, in this disassembly. I think that's because I didn't take the round nut off. Uh, but uh, just make sure at this point that those three are all tight. And now it's time to uh, refit that thin red flat washer that we took off earlier. Again, remember that it's fragile. Take your time. Just slide it down onto the bottom and onto the face of the bearing. Right, so now it's time to put the worm carrier on. So, with the worm uppermost, we slide that down and carefully engage the worm alongside the worm gear. Now there's another bearing which needs to go in the opposite end of the body of the mount to the tapered bearing. So this, this uh, flat bearing goes at the other end. So grease that one up. So this bearing is ready to go in. Make sure the surface is clean. And that bearing's gone in without a fight this time. It's looking nice. And make sure it's horizontal so it doesn't fall. Just remember the one on the left because it's tapered even if it is horizontal it stand up, can, can actually still fall. I'm just supporting it with my left hand here so it doesn't fall and then slide the deck shaft back in, engage it the uh, end of the shaft through the tapered bearing until everything seats itself correctly. Now I'm going to put back the counterweight bar on the top, making sure it's the right way around. Obviously you want the threaded hole uh, at the bottom where the little button goes. And now the white collar, we need to refit the green graticule ring onto this. Apologies that I'm slightly off camera there. Just greasing the thread on there, putting a little bit of grease where the green Graticule ring goes so that it turns nice and smoothly. And now we can pop the ring on. Make sure you put it on the right way up. Remember when you look uh, this way up, the numbers should be the right way up, as shown there. And do up the two little thumb screws so it doesn't fall off. Okay, so just supporting the top of the deck, we can now slide this on the shaft and start screwing this tapered collar up, which holds everything uh, together to the main body of the mount. I'm not going to tighten this up super tight, I'm just going to nip it, just nip it up, and that's all. And put the button back into the end of the counterweight bar.
now we can turn the RA back to the home position and start concentrating on the worm carrier and the first thing to do there is to put the three large screws in place to hold the carrier onto the mount but bearing in mind that uh, we, we need, we're going to need to tune the backlash from scratch so we don't want to put these in tightly at all at this stage so we'll just get the three screws in And just just turn them until they stop but don't put any kind of torque on them really so just turning these down until they stop okay so now we need to tighten up the three grub screws that uh, secure the collar, tapered collar at the base of the, of the deck onto the deck shaft. Tighten them down and nip them up. and now we can turn the mount back to the home position again so now we can put the declination clutch brass button back in the hole it's been cleaned so I'm just going to put a little bit of grease on that and pop it into the hole it needs to go square into the hole not in an angle it needs to be square and it should go in easily once it's square to the hole now we can put the clutch screw back into the hole a little bit of grease on that not too much or it all starts oozing out when you tighten it up that will inevitably happen a little bit but you can clean off any excess once the screw's gone in and do that up until it stops and now you can get your reference for putting the, the clutch handle back on you can see where the stop is there's a, an end stop on the white body there but it hits at when it's fully open and so you want to be just about 100 degrees uh, clockwise from that in the fully open position uh, sorry fully closed position and once you're happy that that clutch operates correctly you can fully open and close it you can uh, do up the screw to hold the lever in place and nip that up ok now the top plate can go back on and something to think about when you're putting the top plate back on is the orientation of the Vixen bar dovetail slot uh, to the hole in the declination shaft for the polar scope and when the clutch lever is at the top or at the bottom that hole is aligned with the polar scope so just think about your telescope how you want it oriented when you're doing your polar alignment you may want it pointing um, straight up in the home position for me I want it slightly off because I don't want the base of the telescope hitting my head while I'm looking through the polar scope so I'm choosing to put about a 40 degree angle on there and you can uh, pick and choose how you want to do that once you've decided that you can do up the three large grub screws that hold the top plate onto the top of the deformation shaft I'm just turning it there so you can see better what I'm doing and the last one tighten them all three gently and then I go around them again and knit them up
Okay, so now I'm feeling what the backlash is like by turning the worm uh, gear and I can feel I've got a very large amount of backlash. You can also grab hold of the top of the deck shaft and rock it clockwise and anti-clockwise and feel the rocking motion. So it's time now to start that backlash tuning exercise. I have done a separate tutorial about backlash tuning which I uh, will put a link to at the end of this video. Uh, but uh, essentially it's a gradual process of uh, doing up one of these grub screws and undoing the other in order to move the worm carrier in the correct direction to engage the worm either more or less into the worm gear uh, and uh, when it's just right you should have minimal backlash and no binding and so I start with everything wide open and because the uh, the worm is at the bottom the deck uh, sorry the, the worm carrier is at its bottom most position so I've got a, a big gap backlash because the worm is not properly engaged into the drive so I'm undoing the bottom screw and doing up the top screw in order to pull the carrier upwards so that the worm comes closer to the gear and I'm doing that about a quarter of a turn at a time but I gradually reduce the amount I adjust by more and more as I get closer and closer and the backlash gets smaller and smaller the aim is not to go too far and end up with it binding. Now you'll know if it's binding because uh, when you try and turn the end of the worm drive you'll feel uh, an unwelcome resistance. If you've gone too far like that then you need to undo the top grub screw and tighten the bottom one in order to pull the carrier back downwards and disengage the worm from the worm gear uh, a little. So it is a fiddly process, it does take time, you have to be patient. There I'm using the rock test to feel the backlash. Still got some backlash so I'm undoing the bottom rub screw, just a quarter of a turn there. And then tightening up the top one, maybe an eighth of a turn. So no backlash and the worm is moving freely I'm just making sure I've got no slack there and that's looking very nice uh, normally you would do up the three screws on the carrier but I actually decided I was going to put the belt on first and run it to make sure it was good before I tightened up those three screws so I'm just checking to see if the motor gear the idler pulley and the worm gear are aligned and they look reasonably well aligned. If they're not well aligned you can undo these two grub screws on the gear on the end of the worm and shift it in its position. So time to put the belt back on. So I'm threading it on the motor first around the idler pulley and onto the larger one remembering to push the motor inwards so that uh, the belt can go on easily. And now we need to apply a little bit of tension onto the belt. We want uh, to use a, a flat blade screwdriver and just put it between the plate and the body there just give it a very gentle very gentle uh, twist just to put a bit of tension on the belt and then um, just to partly tighten the three screws to so just hold it in place and we can then test the tension to see if we're happy with that just a little push just up the last screw And just a little push with your finger to see how much this part of the belt deflects and I uh, decided it was just a little bit tighter than I wanted here so just loosening those uh, three screws off slightly and then again with the flat blade screwdriver at the other side just nudging that motor inwards and maybe I've gone slightly too far there so put the screwdriver in just nudge back the other way this is looking good Let's get two millimetres of deflection there, and once you've got it, nip up those uh, three screws firmly so it doesn't shift. Two millimetres of deflection. So now I'm going to connect up the power and the hand controller, switch on the mount. 
uh, just wait for the handset to initialize and then just press enter all the way through the menus until you get to uh, begin star alignment or begin alignment and say no to that by pressing 2 and then I set the rate to 9 and then start turning the RA. Now here it's all about listening to the sound is it running smoothly, is it making horrible grinding noises uh, it should run really really smoothly So that's sounding good. So I'm now going to tighten the three large screws that hold the worm carrier on. Really important here that you rotate round the screw, three screws, turning a small amount each time. Don't crank one down, then the other, and then the other. Just put a little bit on each one and rotate around and rotate around. It's a bit like the cylinder head on a on a car. Uh, you don't want it to shift its position while you're doing this. So you just rotate around so it doesn't move. Of course the acid test of whether it's shifted while you've been tightening up the screws is to rerun uh, the deck make sure you've got no backlash. Backlash should still be negligible and it should still run smoothly. Now that the worm carrier is secure, I'm going to run it a full 360 degrees so it exercises the entire circumference of the worm gear. Make sure there's no binding at any point in a full cycle. The other thing I want to do is to check that the belt, now the belt's rotated, that the belt is sitting nicely on the worm gear. If you find that it's not, then you can actually loosen the two grub screws on the worm gear and uh, see that it's slightly off, but it's actually pretty good alignment here. If the gear is protruding on the right side of this view, uh, undo the two grub screws and uh, you can actually run it and just tap gently on the head of the gear with your finger until it seats itself nicely onto the belt and then of course once you're happy you need to tighten those two grub screws up again but now that I'm happy with that I'm now doing that full 360 degrees check I'm on rate 9 here so it doesn't go any faster than this so apologies if this is boring. Ok so if you're completely happy there's no binding anywhere around the deformation rotation circle uh, and you have no backlash then you can put the cover back on over your motors and once that's done your declination strip down and rebuild is complete as you can see it's quite a long process and we've only done one axis I did uh, the deck one day and I left it a few days and I did the RA on a totally different day. It's uh, quite, quite a long winded process. And there we go, the deck is complete. 
So with the deck complete, it's time to do the right ascension. I have to do this on a different day if you haven't got time. So we start by locking off the detonation clutch and putting the counterweight bar tucked away inside. Remove the polar scope cover. and unscrew the polar scope from the mount and remove it. Undoing the right ascension clutch and just turning it over which is how it naturally hangs with its uh, centre of gravity and now using a Phillips screwdriver to undo the screw on the RA clutch lever and with the screw out you can remove the lever and now unscrew the clutch bolt and again there's a brass button inside there on this occasion it's come out on the end of the bolt so I don't have to have a fight to get it out which is handy Now I'm removing the motor cover And with that off, we need to slacken the three bolts that hold the motor face plate onto the mount. Make sure you undo the right three bolts. The other three are for holding the plate to the motor, which you don't want to touch. Push the motor as close towards the idler as possible, or towards the main, main pulley as possible, and then remove the belt. Now we need to undo the plate at the poloscope end. There are two very small rub screws. You're not looking to remove them, you're just looking to loosen them. And they only need to come out so that they protrude by about a millimetre. This is just a side view of the same two grub screws being undone. So you can see how far I've undone them. And once those two are loosened off, you should be able to grab this black ring and I'm just actually locking off the graticule there so that it doesn't fall and then grab the black ring and unscrew it. Now you can loosen the graticule and take it off. Now you need to undo the two grub screws that are used for adjusting the backlash on the RA carrier. One on the flat side. Now the other is underneath the electronics box on the other side. So we need to remove the electronics box using a Phillips screwdriver first to give us access to the other grub screw. No, I'm supporting the head here because it's trying to rotate under gravity. So I'm just holding on to it. need to be very gentle with this uh, electronics box when it's dangling on its wires. Make sure it doesn't catch on things as you rotate the head for example. Just get the last seconds of those screws out. Let's just uh, 
giving me a bit of trouble there. And it's out. Okay, so now I can undo the grub screw, give it a good three or four turns, but don't uh, completely remove it, just loosen it right off. And now turn the head round, let it hang downwards. So now we're going to remove the entire head from the tripod, so we need to remove the spreader from underneath. And now we can lift the entire head, just uh, loosening the azimuth bolts there, and lift the entire head off the tripod. Keep a good hold of it there, because remember there's no clutch done up on there, there's no clutch on the uh, RA. So now I'm putting it in a particular orientation on its back. Now this is important that the RA axis, the actual axis bar, is vertical. So it's a specific orientation, and the idea here is to use the weight of the head uh, and use gravity to your advantage and this helps to avoid damage to your mount so it's important to do it in this orientation it's a little unstable you can see I've put it on a pillow uh, but you need to keep a hold of it so it doesn't fall over so undoing the nut at the top there three grub screws secure that so once they're loose you can unscrew this and now we need to lift the Altaz section and press down on the end of the RA axis post and lift up. There's a tapered bearing in the top, so take that out and then grabbing hold of the bottom and lift the cylinder off. You should find that the bearing has come out and is still on the shaft but it may also be left behind in the other housing you just removed. Make sure that that bearing is uh, it's just separated. There's a red flat washer just like on the deck. And now we can loosen the bolts, the three bolts that hold the RA worm carrier to the mount head and take them out. Still being careful not to let it fall over. Once those three bolts are out, we can lift the worm carrier up and off. And we can now remove the worm gear. It may be a bit sticky, but uh, ease up on it, it should come upwards and slide off. You'll notice that there's a brass cube, just like there is for the detonation. Uh, that the grub screws push against and this is the point that the other grub screw pushes against for the worm carrier adjustment. You might want to make sure that cube is straight again as before. And once again I'm lining up all my components neatly so I'm ready to go back on during reassembly. So you'll need to remove the bearing from the top and bottom of the RA worm gear as you did for the declination. And note that there is also a thin transparent flat washer probably sitting on top of your uh, bearing on top of the worm gear or maybe stuck on the underneath of the red one. So you need to follow the following steps now I'm not going to show them in the video because they're the same as for the declination but you need to disassemble the worm carrier in the same way. You need to remove the two bearings from the worm gear as I just said, clean and degrease all the gears and all the bearings then regrease and reassemble the worm carrier and its components, regrease all the bearings, fit the bearings to the worm gear, and then regrease the worm gear itself. So now we're doing the reassembly. So first of all, fit the worm gear onto the shaft, obviously with the uh, teeth downwards. Fit the transparent flat washer and then the red flat washer.
Now you can fit one of the uh, large ring bearings. And now the worm carrier goes on. Once that's in place, you can fit the three large screws to secure it. But you need to only do these screws up until they just stop. Don't want them tight, because uh, again, as for the deck, we need to tune the backlash. So the worm engagement's got to be tuned, so we need to leave the carrier able to move. Okay, so now we can fit the Altaz block back on there, it should engage nicely into the bearing and now the tapered bearing can go in the top and then that's all held together with the black ring nut. Now you don't want to do this up super tight, just, just hand tight is good enough. and then tighten the three grub screws that lock it to the shaft. Okay, with that done, the whole assembly can go back onto the tripod. And we secure it again with the spreader plate. And with that tight we can put the RA reticule ring back on. Let's pop it into place and tighten the little thumb screw. And now this ring which carries the thread for the telescope cover can go back on. Make sure that the two protruding grub screws stay on the outside when you put this on. Finger tight again is good enough. It's only there to hold the telescope cover. And then tighten the two small grub screws to secure it. Now we can put uh, the uh, little the brass button, make sure it's greased on both sides and pop it back into the hole for the clutch and then we can fit the clutch bolt again with a bit of grease on its thread. And do that up all the way until you feel it stop. Now we can fit the lever. Now you're looking here at the end stop and you want to be about 110 degrees round from the end stop because it's already in the clutch closed position and when it opens it should hit the end stop. So 
provided you've got the right position you can put the screw in using the Phillips screwdriver and now you can test the clutch make sure you're happy that it's working nicely now the polar scope can go back in I just gently insert it into the hole and screw in the thread until it stops again doesn't need to be tight just finger tighten it no more and put the polar scope cover back on so now it's time to adjust the RA worm carrier to get the right engagement between the worm drive and the worm gear using the two grub screws at opposite sides of the carrier and this uh, backlash tuning is the subject of a separate tutorial that I've done as I said earlier so I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail I'm just going to show a couple of example tweaks that I'm doing but the proper process is described in the other tutorial it's a sort of successive process of loosening one grub screw and tightening the other uh, and uh, checking the backlash and checking for binding and when you have minimal backlash and no binding essentially you're done and once you achieve that you need to tighten very gradually the three large bolts that secure the, the RA worm carrier to the mount working your way around the three bolts tightening each one a little so as not to shift its position having uh, so carefully fought to get it just right so keep rotating around the three screws, small amount on each one until they're all pretty firmly tight. Exactly the same process as we did with the deck carrier. Okay, so we can now return the mount to its home position. And do a final check. We've got no binding, it's moving nice and freely, and we've got minimal backlash. So now I'm happy with that. We can now fit the rowan belt back on. sure the motor is pushed as close to the worm gear as possible so the belt goes on nice and easily. You may need to rotate the gear a little to help the belt go on. But don't force it, you don't want to stretch the belt. And there it goes on nicely now. Now I want to put a little bit of tension on the belt using a flat blade screwdriver, exactly the same process as was done for the detonation. Put a little bit of tension on the belt and then do up the screws a little just to tighten them. Check that belt tension, look for two millimeters of deflection. And when it's right, you just uh, tighten up those three screws firmly so it doesn't move. Also need to check you've got a good alignment, a good position of that worm gear uh, relative to the belt that you've not got in you know, half the width of the belt engaged. It needs to be almost entirely engaged. That's, and that looks good. So now we can do a quick movement test before we fit the electronics box in position. Uh, it's a little bit hairy this, you have to be just very careful. You're dangling the box on its wires and then hanging a weight off it. So just be very, very gentle with it so as not to stress those wires too much. I'm just going to run it 45 degrees just to make sure I'm absolutely happy before I put the electronics box on because as soon as that's on of course it's covering up one of the two adjustment grub screws and we can no longer uh, adjust uh, the backlash. Setting the rate to 9 and then start it moving. I'm just going to go as I say 45 degrees 
that's sounding very nice. So there's a good chance we haven't shifted the carrier by mistake uh, in tightening it up and that we're good to go. So I've now taken the controller and power wires out and uh, obviously powered the mount down as well and um, reconnecting the electronics box with the two screws using a Phillips screwdriver. Don't do these up too tight, just enough that it's uh, securely in place, but don't make them very tight, those screws. Now you can reconnect the power and the hand controller and put it through a full 360 degree rotation check to show that there's no binding going out on at any point. And I've sped this up for you uh, so that it's not too boring to sit and watch. And once you've completed a full 360 degree cycle, you can undo the clutch and uh, turn it back to the home position, or thereabouts, switch off the power. Now we just need to put the cover back on the motors. and our HEQ5 stripped down and rebuild is complete. If you found this video useful or informative and you'd like to see more of the tutorials I have planned, just click the link and subscribe to this channel. Clear skies!